Hey, hey, Bob. Oh, I wanted to ask you something. Caesar. Hit, hit, pass. Don't forget. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Here you go. Well, I wanted you to take a look at that ball down there. Yes, Caesar. I see it just fine. Well, it it's pretty curvy, I'd say. Curvy? I don't think so, Caesar. It's quite convex. Convex? What are you talking about? It's super curvy. No, no, no. Convex. Very convex. Hey, man. What you doing? Why you wasting all the body's time with this shit? Screw your roots. If you want to hit, just ask. Hello and welcome to Caesar's Snack Sandwich. Today we're on Ethereum taking a look at Convex Finance. Now, Convex Finance has been maybe accused or compared to Yearn Finance quite a bit. And they do have some similarities in some senses, but I think they they stand apart by themselves in uh, some regards that you know, makes them valid, worth looking at, and so forth. So I'm going to uh, go through Convex, and once in a while I'll swing over to Year in Finance and compare the different the, the similarities or the differences therein. Okay, so let's go ahead into Convex Finance, and uh, I'll explain to you what's going on inside here. So Convex Finance is basically focused purely on curve finance. Um, Basically, it allows users of Curve Finance to take advantage of a few more rewards and boost their uh, their income, so to speak. So let's go over to Curve Finance first and talk a little bit about what happens here, and then we can go back and better understand Convex. So if you look here, there are a whole bunch of pools on Curve Finance, and you can supply to them, and you can gain rewards. So as you can see, this pool has 20%, and it goes up to 52%. So in order to understand what happens, how can you get this 20% to become 52%? The way to do that is to take your CRV rewards, which this percentage is, and to lock them for a long period of time, maybe one, two, three, or four years. So if you lock them for like four years, then you can boost your APY up slowly by slowly. It doesn't instantly go to this high, but the more you lock, the more boost you will get, basically. So what uh, Convex is allowing people to do is it's having a communal lock. So everyone can lock CRV here and then everyone's communal CRV lock will boost the, uh, the, the vaults below or the, uh, the APYs on all the pools below. So what you would do is you would come here, you would choose the pool that you're interested in providing liquidity to. Let's say you wanted this one, you would supply to it, and then you would get an LP token and you would bring it here and stake it inside here. And you would get boosted rewards from everyone who has supplied CRV to uh, this pool. Now, another thing you're also getting from Curve uh, Convex Finance is that they also supply you with some of their governance tokens by using these pools as well. So they're able to boost their pools and give out some CVX tokens, which is their governance token. So they're further boosting the APYs by also giving you some of their governance token. So this is the first thing that separates um, Convex from Yearn Finance. Yearn Finance also has a lot of these curve pools. And if you wanted to take advantage of these curve pools, you could put your curve pool here and you would gain the boosted reward as well because Curve also, uh, Yearn Finance also has this boosting system where they will allow people to put their CRV here and boost all the votes below. However, how it's very different is Yearn Finance does not have a distribution of governance tokens anymore. So they cannot boost this uh, APY like Convex can by giving CVX tokens. However, Yearn Finance can also send some of these into Convex and farm these boosted uh, rewards and farm these CVX tokens for you. So one of the things that really sets Convex apart from Yearn is that Convex doesn't sell any of the tokens for you. It just boosts. So it just gets you more CRV and you will have to claim the CRV yourself and do with it as you please. Now this is good for certain users, you know, certain users would like to get more APY and they would like to 
hold the car the crv token whereas if you're on yearn you won't be able to hold any of the crv tokens if you put it in here they would harvest the crv for you sell it and get you more of these so that's a different user profile somebody who doesn't care about the crv token they just want more us dollars this might be a better idea whereas here if you were to put your three pool tokens in here you would have to come daily, weekly, monthly, whenever it seems appropriate and actually harvest your CRV from here and your CVX tokens from here. And then you could do with as you please. Now, I do assume someone who is a large whale and only cares about US dollars will probably just sell these CRV anyways and sell the CVX anyways. So a whale might be better off in here because he could just put his money in here and then go about his life. Someone who wants CRV tokens and wants to, you know, collect this token for its potential capital gains might be better off in here. Now, a lot of people are comparing this to these. Okay, so these are very similar. So if you stick your CRV in here, you're going to get CVX CRV which is a ERC20 token. The VECRV, if you were to stake your CRV into Curve, you would get VECRV and this token is not tradable. So it locks into your wallet and you can't do anything with it. You basically hold it. But this token here is tradable. So they have LPs on the market on Uniswap and so forth, where you could take this token if you wanted to. If you wanted to get out of this position, you could sell this token. But the same thing happens at Yearn. You know, this YV boost and this YV CRV token, these are both tradable as well. And it's the same idea. You put your CRV in here, they uh, farm the three pool rewards for you. Well, in this case, you would have to harvest your three pool rewards by yourself and in this case they will hover for you and just create more boost tokens for you and you can take these boost tokens to the market and sell them so they're very similar in this sense like there's they're almost exactly the same uh, the only difference here is that you're also going to get some more CVX tokens on top of the uh, the three pool tokens that you will get from holding this position so just to be very clear I'll explain it one more time if you put your CRV in here you will get CVX CRV, which will boost all of these uh, things below. And you will also get uh, the uh, CVX tokens for for supplying to this. And you will also get the weekly curve three pool tokens that are distributed like basically these three pool tokens come from curve finances fees. So you get the, the fees, you get to boost and you get CVX tokens and it's a liquid position where you can pull out at any time. In Yearn Finance, a little bit different. In this one, you get the boosted, you boost all the Yearn Volts, you get the weekly three CRV rewards, and you can sell them as you please. And then this one here, basically you put your CRV in here and you just get more and more and more of these boost tokens. So as you can see, they're quite similar in this sense and uh, that's why they're being compared and contrasted a lot. And that's why I'm doing this video. Now, I do think that they are different enough. You know, there's a different enough position here um, to warrant having both of them. Like this allows people to have more choice. This allows people to not worry about coming to DeFi every day. So I, I, I think both of them are valid and both of them are worth considering for yourself and deciding what you think is better. Now, the next thing we should probably talk about a little bit that sets these two protocols apart is the fee structure, okay? So if we go to the three pool here and we take a look here and we hover over here, we can see down here it says fees already deducted from the, all the figures shown. So 10% given to the CVX CRV stakers. So if somebody were to supply CRV here somewhere and stake it, and then you would gain some, you would gain 10% of the fees taken from everybody who's supplied to this pool. So basically they are going to harvest some of the CRV and give those to these people who have staked this CVX CRV. So it gives a little bit more incentive to those people. So let's keep going. And then it says 5% platform fees distributed to the CVX stakers. So people who just stake CVX will gain 5% of that, uh, those rewards. And then 1% is fees for the harvesters, the people who are actually 
you know, uh, running the the bots or the people who are harvesting those tokens for people and then, you know, allocating them and so forth. Now, if we go over to Yearn Finance, it's a little bit different. Now, if we go to the three CRV, you can see the management fee is 2% and the performance fee is 20%. Again, this is only on profit. So they take 22% of the profit and they give it to the treasury at Yearn. And then this treasury, this Yearn treasury uses it for several ways. One of the things that it does with this uh, money is it gives it to the community of the people who are working with Yearn and helping out Yearn and advertising for Yearn and so forth. But a large portion of these fees goes to the strategist who runs the vault and he takes care of pretty much everything. It's up to him to make sure that it's harvesting, it's running and it's making money. Now, another important thing to consider here is that this this uh, this vault here can be multi-strategic, whereas this, it has one strategy. It just basically sticks the three pool into curve and farms the CRV tokens. However, here they could send some of these three CRV to curve and farm there, and then they can send some of them to convex and farm this one. So there's a strategist who's basically designing this and trying to make it as profitable as, po as possible because he will, get paid a large portion. I think it's half of this 20% uh, performance fee. So it's a large portion of money for him and an incentive for him to work hard and make this vault very profitable. And uh, here it's more of a community type thing where everybody who is uh, only 1% is going basically to the, the managers or the, the developers who are working on these pools. So they have quite different profiles in when you think about the fees as well, like these fees here are distributed more to the, the users of the platform, whereas here they're, you know, distributing the, uh, the fees a lot more to the general yearn ecosystem as well as not just the, uh, the people who are staking some of their tokens. Okay. Um, I hope this is useful. Um, I know it's a little bit confusing. You know, I'm jumping around. I'm explaining two protocols at the same time. And uh, I hope, but I hope it's been useful and I hope you have a better understanding. Now, obviously, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, just using this video to just decide. This is a introduction. So you should probably go and look deeper into each of these protocols and decide which protocol, if either of them is the best choice for you. Okay. So thank you so much for watching and goodbye.